Good afternoon all, Camelback Trading that all coming to you this Friday afternoon, November 12th. We are looking at Window Traders market profile of SPY IWM and Triple Qs. And you know, it feels good when you, when you see a market and you call a market well, and boy did we nail it on the head. We've been talking about this basically for two days, right? As far as at some point, especially with the inside day yesterday, some change is gonna take place. We're either gonna take out yesterday's high and get above A's low from Wednesday and take out shorts, or we're going to take out yesterday's low, and the shorts are going to continue. Well, it was a little dicey early this morning, and I had a trade that I was in trouble with early in uh, in A. I'll go over that, but then hit uh, you know a grand slam on uh, a trade in C period. Um, <clears throat> we're going to go over all of these indices charts, uh, triple Qs. Same profile as us, same exact thing that we did. They go out with a double distribution day, two sets of single prints. They end nine wide, though. We only ended eight. They go out with a price probe, but they never got Wednesday's high. So they're firmly in a three-day balance on the daily. Russell, two days in a row, inside day. Thursday inside of Wednesday, Friday inside of Thursday. So that's a pot of water that's about to boil. 12 wide POC. They blew their perfect POC chance um, late in the day. They have two wide POC. Well, they got the wide POC uh, from yesterday, but two inside days. They took out their IB from the downside. So that's about to boil over. Remember I said, if we come out of an inside day and fail or don't come out of it, we're going to get the wide POCs from the previous day. Guess what? Russell opened, went right down to their wide POC. Triple Q's opened, went right down to their wide POC. We opened right down to our wide POC. Okay, so, you know, it's reading the MGI and knowing who your competition is. We go out with a double distribution day, price probe, only eight wide, two sets of single prints. We did take out Wednesday's high. In fact, we popped above it pretty good, but come right back, basically. So I'm still going to call the daily balance. It's a three-day balance. If we take out today's high, we firmly go up. If we take out today's low, we'd be still in balance. It would be a four-day balance. Now, and another very important point, inside day up worked tremendously for SPY and Q, and Triple Q and NQ have an outside day up. As they took out yesterday's low to the downside, you talk about a textbook look below and fail. They took out yesterday's low, which was an inside day, rejected the opposite end of the destination is yesterday's high. Boy, did they get that and more. We never took out yesterday's low. We came out to the inside day, the upside, and exploded. Both SPY, ES, NQ, and Triple Q have inside weeks. So that should make for some fun trading next week. As far as my trading, so A period opened up. And, and this is important to see. It's very visual, even though I'm in. So here's yesterday's high. Here's A's low from Wednesday. Clear as day said on the video, everybody's short below this level. If we get above it, we should move. Well, A period opened right around it. I actually said I might take a short against the overnight high to see if they front run it again. Well, I never got really close to it, so I didn't do anything. So when A started coming in, I actually started a long position, very small. I bought a 10 lot, but I bought uh, two, two lots of 10, and then when we got to the, uh, thir we were 13 for 13 wide yesterday. When we got there, I bought 100. I bought the 465, uh, 464 calls. Now, here's where the problem came in. We did nothing. We even went lower. Now, a couple of times I could have added. I paid $1.20 for those 100. We came down. The decay was despicable. They were trading in the 90s at A's low. I lost 20-something cents on them within minutes. And then each time we came back up to them in A, B, and C, they weren't even back to what I paid for them. Plus, I was long another 20 to 10 and a 10 at a higher price. So... Believe it or not, when C took out B's low, I was like, well, this is my line in the sand. If we take out the day's low, that doesn't mean we're coming out of an inside day to the downside yet, right? I would see if there was no tempo, no volume, I was long 120, I was going to put on another 150 at least. Well, that didn't happen. 
When it rallied, I ended up taking it off. I ended up losing money on that trade, even though it was above where I bought all of them. I only lost $200, but that's not the point. That's the problem with options. Then when C was sitting here, I said, okay, I think the sellers had their chance. And I was fired up by uh, losing all that money on that decay. So right before C looked like it wanted to pop A's high, I bought 150 of the 460 uh, four calls. A Wait, let me make sure it was a 464. Yep, 464 calls again. I paid a dollar 47 for them, and I'm telling you, within five seconds of me buying it, C uh, went up, closed, D opened, and exploded. That's a grand slam trade. It went up so fast, I wouldn't have had a chance to take them off, and you know, you know, the way I usually do, and not make as much money. They just ripped. And I even held 40 of them as we got to, um, I held them, I, I think I held it through, I held some of them through E&F because then I wanted to get lunch, yes, and I took and I took the last 10 off. So I held 40 of them on this whole ride up. I made, I don't know, I think I made a, a, a buck 50 on, uh, on like the last 10 of them, I made 1,500. So that's a grand slam trade. And why did it happen? Everything we talk about. I, we gave the roadmap this morning. We said if we get above A's high from yesterday, inside day up, above A's low from Wednesday, everybody's trapped short. What do you think D was? That's all that was. It was a huge uh, short trap. And then the momentum buying kicked in. Then the shorts fizzled out. They, got, they were done. The momentum buying dried up. Why did the momentum buying dry up? Because we got to the top of a three-day balance. And then we traded sideways all day until we decide to probe. That, my friends, is what you learn in this trading room for a dollar a day. So you, you uh, tell me if it's if it's worth it or not. So um, after that C trade, I took a long and now. I was looking for a size long if we pulled back to half back at some point. I took a small long in H, never pulled back uh, long enough for me. And I took a small long, and I actually, when we took out H's, I made small. Now, when K came in, I was all ready to start to buy the 460, uh, 465 calls. I was going to start another couple of cents lo uh, lower. At, K at half back, I would have been long probably 100, 125. Never got there, never took any of them. And then it went up and did its thing. And again, that's fine. My entries are huge to me. So if it doesn't get where I want to even start, I don't take it. So good day, excellent week. And it's just on, on knowing what the market is telling us. As far as destinations, upside, 467.86 today's high. 469.57 daily high. 470.23 weekly high. 470.65 weekly high all-time high so with everything the sellers did I tried to do this week we ended down a little over a dollar for the week and we have only four destinations to the upside pretty amazing for the downside f's high that's the price probe 467.37 then two sets of single prints 466.25 get filled it's 465.37 k's low to c's high and then we have 465.34 to 465.18. D's low to A's high. That's a small set. And then today's low of 464.11. Now, let's go to the charts and break all of these down. We'll start with Russell. So remember, Russell came out of a seven-month balance with a vengeance to the upside. Now, they're still above it. They pulled back from their highs, obviously. They pulled back $5 from their highs, all-time high. But the key is staying above March's high. They're still $5 above that. That's the key to having a run for the end of the year to new highs for Russell. You get acceptance, key word, you get acceptance back into March's range, and the highs are in. Monthly is up. Weekly, up. Weekly is one time framing up now. Uh, five weeks. So up, up, daily. Balance. Two inside days in a row. We got to the high. Came into balance. Went down. And now, 
even though we have not stopped the one time framing down, because it's two inside days in a row, I'm going firmly balanced on the daily. So this is a powder keg. If we come out of it to the upside, we should start getting legs again. They have to take out Wednesday's high, and if they do that, we should start getting legs to all-time highs. If we come out of it to the downside, we should go test the bottom of Wednesday's low. So monthly's up, weekly's up, daily is balanced with two inside days. Triple Q's, monthly up. That's after an outside month up last month. Weekly up, one time framing up five weeks. Inside week, does not stop the one time framing. Now, a lot of people might call this balance. I'm calling it up. I'm going to give the buyers their due. One time framing up five weeks, I'll make the sellers prove it to me to take out last week's low. So for now, I'm still calling it up. It's an inside week though. And the daily balance, but an outside day up. So we had an inside day where we uh, Thursday traded inside of Wednesday, came, took it out to the downside, rejected, went up, took it out to the upside, and ripped up. So inside day up was very successful. It's a three-day balance outside day up. And now let's go to the big boys. SPY and ES. SPY is up in the monthly. Outside month up last month. Weekly, same as Triple Q's, one time framing up five weeks, inside week, I'm still calling it up. And then the daily balance, we stretched our balance. We did take out Wednesday side, but I'm still calling it balance. Inside day up, very successful, but it's a three-day balance. So we have an inside week, just like the inside day, except it's a weekly one. When you come out of it, whenever you do come out of it, you go with it and monitor it for continuation. So if we take out this week's high, we should get going and we should probably go test the all-time high, right? We have two weekly highs close to each other. One of them is the all-time high. If we come out of the weekly inside week to the downside, well, then we should go test two weeks ago's low at 458.20. So a lot of really good setups going into next week for all three of these indices. I hope you had a good day trading. Enjoy the weekend. Rest up. Have a great weekend, and we'll speak prior to the opening on Monday.